All right, so this video will be an introduction to the Raspberry Pi Pixel Hat that uh, was the brainchild of uh, Daryl Pilgrim or Pilgrim or however you pronounce his last name, but Daryl. Uh, shortly after I posted up the videos for the uh, power distribution board over here, Clyde Lindsay contacted me uh, about Daryl who was interested in making this board. Uh, and Daryl sent me his drawings of it and what he wanted to go with, so I just mocked it up and uh, CAD and sent it off to the board house and just got the prototypes back today. This is actually the Reb B, the version B of this board, the first version. We had left a few things off that we wanted to change, so I went back in and updated it. Uh, the board itself looks just like this. Uh, it's all through hole components, very simple board, not very complex at all. Uh, it has, it, it, what it does is for those that don't know, you can run pixels directly off of the Raspberry Pi, uh, off of the GPIO headers. Uh, but you know, in order to do that, you've got to have you know some kind of cables to plug up to the headers or solder to the headers, or, um, and a lot of and this just simplifies that and puts it on a board for you and gives you the traditional uh, Euro style plugs that we're all used to. And these are just the standard, you know, plug them on, unplug them uh, plugs that we're all used to using. So to walk you through the board, over here on the left hand corner, we've got the power input and uh, coming in uh, and we'll skip what that jumper is for just a second because that may just be a prototype I haven't decided whether or not that's going to make it to production but for now we'll just skip it and I'll come back to it so power will come in it'll go down to the fuse uh, the fuse in here it's a 15 amp max I've only got a 7.5 amp fuse in it now uh, and then it'll come down here and distribute power to these two uh, plugs for 2811 pixels or 2812 that's why it says 28 28 one X, so you can have whatever uh, 2811 series that you have, whether it be 2811 or 2812. There's also a plot on here if anybody wants to add a 2801. Uh, we, I didn't add that here because I don't use them, but it is available coming off the Pi. The Pi can do. And this is the Pi running the FPP. We'll do the 2811 or the 2801. Uh, and then it also takes the grounds uh, and the data, and as you can see, the traces. It comes down and it breaks those out and brings them down to the, the headers, or the plugs as well. Uh, the plug for it is actually here, and it's just a, a, your typical Raspberry Pi hat that'll plug right into the top of the Pi, so installation is really simple. And as far as this jumper here, uh, so what this jumper here is for is I use all five volts in, five volts in my display, uh, and of course the Pi is five volts, so I didn't want to have to run two different power plugs to the Pi, so you can power the Pi directly off of a GPIO header. However, there's a, a really firm warning there. If you're wanting to power it off the GPIO header, of course you have to give it exactly 5 volts. And you also uh, have no protection, whereas if you power it from the front USB, the mini USB port on the Pi, there, are, there is protection built in, but powering it from the GPIO header gives you zero protection whatsoever. So installation of this board uh, goes a little something like this. Of course, you hook up your pixels just like you normally would, uh, and I labeled the front of it. So I can turn it around here in some light. I labeled the front of it just like normal, positive voltage, data, and ground, uh, and they wire up just like most of the common controllers out there on the market that we all use now. And let's see if I can plug this thing up on camera so it just sits right down on the pin. So what I'm doing is taking this header and just popping it right down on the pins. Uh, and it just simply pops right into place. And that's all there is to it. Uh, sits right down on top of the, the GPIO header of the Raspberry Pi. And as you can see, my Pi has already started powering up here. Because as soon as I plugged that up to it, it got power and started powering up. Alright, and then on the front, I've also, as you can see, got a little rubber stopper. And that's what's holding the Pi hat up level. So that way it doesn't come down or anything. Uh, we may look at different putting uh, standoffs in here through the holes because I did make the holes line up with what's on the Raspberry Pi. Uh, and this is just for the V Plus, by the way. But I did make the holes line up as well, but this board fits right down on top of it perfectly. Uh, so, and like I was showing you earlier, these plugs just come off and on like normal Euro style plugs would do. All right, it looks like my Wi-Fi is starting to kick on over here, so that's good news. 
So what we'll do now is move over here to the computer and I'll show you how to get the pixels running on it. Uh, I've got one string of pixels here coming off of output number one. And then over on my desk, I've got another set of pixels running to a star that are, that are run over here. So we'll move over there now and I'll show you what we got. Yeah, my daughter's kitten on my desk. That's cute. All right, so over here on the FPP, we can simply go in here to enable test mode. And as you can see, pixels immediately come on. And they should be on as well over here. So both outputs are working fine. Uh, what I can also do, let me zoom in here if I can, is of course go down here and make them all white. Wow, that looks ridiculously purple. But they are all white. It's just the screen, the camera trying to focus on the computer screen. Uh, and then if we wanted to chase through colors, we can. We wanted to go through here, uh, do the different chase patterns. So it works just fine. Uh, the way this is set up on the, the FPP is simply on the output settings. So if you go to channel outputs up here, and then you go over to other. In the options, if you, you were to try to add one, you'd have all these options down through here, and the option would be uh, the RPI WS281X, which would be 2811, 2812. Let's see if we can get that to focus any better. And that's what I've already done here is added this one in here, uh, and I've just added two separate strings, 50 pixels on one, 36 on the other, uh, and it's just outputting directly off the pot. And it's all set up for uh, starting channel one and the number of channels. So if I go back into display testing, there it is again. I can show you me changing the testing settings on it. Uh, we can go down here and change the patterns or give it just the fill colors and change it from red to blue to green. Uh, there's blue. I'm going to turn that all the way off. Oh, I don't have any up turned all the way off, do I? There we go. So we got green. It's blown out. Red. And blue. So as you can see, it controls them perfectly. Uh, not sure on the component pricing yet. I'm actually trying to get sourcing for the component pricing as we speak. Uh, along with the board house, the same board house and component process processing that I use for the uh, power distribution board. Uh, this one will probably run on a group buy as well. Uh, I think on this one though it's either going to be Daryl or Clyde or possibly both of them that will really facilitate that group buy because uh, it's more of a, their brainchild than mine. Uh, mine was I, All I did was help facilitate bringing it together. But that is the introduction to the Pi Hat. Uh, very cool little board. Uh, as you can see, just standalone operation with a Raspberry Pi and pixels hooked up to the top of it and power coming into it. Uh, it works great. Uh, no complaints at all. Uh, so there you go. Have a good one.